praise the Lord today in the name of Jesus Christ and the name of our sovereign Lord. We really give thanks for his continuing fullness, his constancy, his sovereignty. Just giving God thanks for who he is, as some say, uncreated and unchanging. To God be the glory. It is always best for you to bring God a praise offering. Before you jump into a request, will you let God know that he is faithful to all generations? Will you let him know that his love endures forever? Will you tell, listen, will you get into Isaiah 43, which is a timely reading at this time, uh, telling, I don't know, innumerable instances, I am God. All of the prophets point to the fact that God hates idolatry. And he says, I am Yahweh. And he gives countless instances as to why you should trust him in his unchanging excellency. Is it sometimes I wonder if I'm able to even preach because the magnificence of God, his uh, purity. When I think of you trembling today where you are because of the contamination of a virus. And I think of the awesome purity of God that cleanses. His holiness without blemish. When I think of God, I am lost in a cloud, as it were. Because it is not possible to even comprehend who he is as he tells us I am not a man and outside of that he is everything else and all else in between and so we as we were saying the last time I was here all that you have to do is say God you are my only refuge even if, as in Isaiah 43, it said you had idols in your right hand, little carved dolls, and they were in the water and the fire, even so, even if your ancestors believed in them, God tells you today it is a lie. I am he. And if you will say today that he is your refuge and your fortress, your strong tower, then you can then say, well, He's destroyed the fowler today. Yeah, yeah, say, say the fowler is gone. Yeah, and the arrow has been broken. You talk like this. And even if you haven't sensed it, even if you haven't realized it yet, it just, just your words will cause the arrow to conform to what you're saying. This is how it works. I'm going to get on today with, I, I just love talking about God if you don't mind. Hallelujah. So God is greater than your fear. And the Christ Jesus that I was talking about for two episodes inside of the great men of wisdom, working inside of them, not yet manifested. But today we know that you too have become lively stones built up onto his glory because of the images and the presence of the former houses, the tabernacles. I wanted to lead you gently through the tabernacles to your tabernacle here, where your Savior lives. The Lord bless you. The Lord uh, uh, reassure your spirit. Just a reminder, we preachers and teachers and whatever office we're in, we're here to 
tell you of the continuing unbroken goodness of God and that there's no hiccup in God. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. And so uh, we won't spend a lot of time on review. Uh, we talked about um, the basis for asking God what you want. We took as a pattern a portion of the prayer of Solomon and let you know how to be specific and orderly in your asking. God is not a man. He does not respond through his senses or his soul. He's something else. Just say God is something else. We're going to find out what that is sometime in the name of Jesus Christ. So uh, as we move through the spirit of wisdom, I'm going to continue speaking of wisdom and what it does and how it works, but how it's working in you through Christ Jesus. Because Christ has been given to you a spirit of wisdom. And if all that you have seen and heard and read in the Bible and know about wisdom. And if you think that Jesus Christ is a spirit of wisdom, then he is all of that and more. All of that. And he's been given to you so that you can fulfill all the will of God, all the kingdom. And here we go with today's prayer. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, Yes, we're beginning to feel the collective sadness and the, the sorrow uh, sweeping the earth at this time. But um, we press on. We press on. Because we still have a mark of high calling. We press on. And so, Father, today I'm going to pray and uh, then we'll discuss that a little bit and then I have to speed through the next 20 minutes for you in Jesus' name grace be unto you today. Father, we thank you greatly, greatly, and bless your name today, not only in the making of supplications and petitions, but in thanksgiving for the blessed provision of your benefits, your love, and your provision. We are conscious of the timing of this prayer with much joy and gratitude, giving thanks for the immeasurable gift of wisdom, Christ Jesus. So then, let now the power, the power of Christ, the cross of Christ and the blood of Christ, be lifted up against every form of pestilence today. And I would say bringing it down to nothing every form of disease and untimely death today. We pray divine timing today in all our activities and endeavors, our coming in and our going out. Therefore, we shall say according to the divine will, we shall pray and seek your face at the right time that is our prayer time, and you need a prayer routine and a ritual, not just to, uh, you know, sometimes on, sometimes off. You need to continue and pray in the name of Jesus. And so we pray and uh, seek your face at the right time, and we shall travel in safely and arrive at the right time. Our leisure time and our time of prayer shall be at the right time. And we shall always seek your face in prayer, not when we want to, but at the right time. Our worship and our rejoicing shall be at the right time. Our congregating, coming together, shall be at the right time. That the divine order be satisfied. We shall not haphazardly do anything, but it shall be at the right time. That our joy 
may be full. And our peace remains with us at the right time. The Lord bless you. I've had amazing results from that simple prayer. Praying that somehow you are not where a virus is today. Shalom. And so today I'm saying then, it requires then the wisdom and the knowledge of Christ Jesus working in you by the Holy Spirit uh, to, for you to pray effectively. We are praying for you that you desire this gift of wisdom. We want you to have it because it, uh, uh, it, it is not hard to see what is happening around us because of a lack of wisdom. Now, now, uh, uh, action and reaction, uh, um, action response is not wisdom. That means that if I do something, you will react to it. Uh, but what if I have misled you? Then you're twice misled. So, we pray then according to divine wisdom. And that this wisdom is given freely by receiving Christ Jesus knowing that he is indeed the spirit of wisdom. And you will know and be led into prayer by the Holy Spirit when you acknowledge and recognize that the Holy Spirit works together with the spirit of Christ Jesus at work in you, not outside. This is where Pentecostals and Charismatics and everybody like to say, greater is he that is within me. Well, I'm going to be telling you what that greatness inside of you does for you 24 hours a day forever until you're not here. Praise be to God and maybe beyond. And so then, as we consciously and conscientiously pray that this work increases rapidly by the Holy Spirit, we possessing the faith to do this will pray it for you. We're not asking you at this time. All of a sudden, no one's going to say to you, you're not healed because you don't have enough faith. If Lazarus, if Lazarus was raised from the dead, well, he didn't have faith. It was the faith of Christ Jesus that rose him up. You understand me? So then, hmm. now wait a minute. Do not judge yourself. You might be wrong. Amen. And so I call on all of us to pray for you today. Pray ye one for another and do so without ceasing. And this is the greatest request yet that you pray for one another. That you pray knowing that Christ Jesus, the spirit of wisdom is working in you. You being a Christ, you being in Christ Jesus, having the Holy Spirit, it means that you have joined a great forum of faith, power, miracles, and a believing community. And I must say here that if Christianity is done right and it's not compromised, there is no greater faith yet because it works entirely in the spirit realm, not where thieves break in and steal. I'm going to tell you more about that later. Amen. And so then, oh, we praise the Lord as we continue today. Now, how awesome and wonderful things are happening. Not only the virus. Look, wait a minute. Not only corona is happening. Corona is in your face because your, your TV is on all the time. Now, some other awesome things and wonderful things are happening around uh, the earth. That's true. Not everyone is dying from COVID-19. Prophecies are being fulfilled today. Amen. Great healings are happening that you haven't heard about. People are recovering. The deep desires of the hearts of some are being answered today. Today, some prayer some prayers have been prayed more than 10 years. Some have been saying, how long, Lord, how long? <laughs> but, 
But after 10 years today, somebody's prayer is being answered. And right now, I'm speaking to you out of the truth of the Holy Spirit. We'll need to continue this conversation as we focus on asking going forward. Now, I want to say to you that uh, all things have been given unto you by God. It, it, no, God has made provision for you. It doesn't mean because there is an ocean full of water that you cannot die of thirst. Yes, because you didn't ask for a drink. I was led into this realization by the Holy Spirit. Yes, provision is unlimited. Health and healing unlimited. Wholeness is unlimited. But you have to ask. Now, you may have a $215 million in a lottery floating around New York City. But don't focus on the finite amount of $215 million or $300 million. Focus on the unlimited provision of God, which is always in perpetual supply. Focus on that. Amen. Amen. So is your health. So is your well-being. In the name of Jesus Christ. We give thanks. Father, we give you thanks. Hallelujah. And so now, King Solomon asked for and received the gift of wisdom. You know that. He did so because of the assignment and his purpose, his destiny. We cannot even imagine the disasters that would have surrounded King Solomon had he not, had he not had the wisdom, and had he not been working under covenant given by God. I just heard the Holy Spirit saying something that, imagine what the stock market would have been like in Solomon's time. Because he had more increase, more money, more provision than the treasury could hold. Now that is increase. And the only thing that they're telling me is he had great wisdom. Hallelujah. And so then... Well, that's amazing. I, I, I don't function in the, uh, uh, the financial realm at all. I would not have known that. And so, uh, that, that, this is an amazing thing that the Lord would speak to me about the treasury and about the stock market, right in the middle of my speaking about wisdom. More wisdom to you today, in Jesus' name. Here's another portion of the great prayer that Solomon uh, brought before the Lord. Solomon brought a prayer before the Lord. Last week, I focused on the beginning of that prayer. Hallelujah. And today, today, hallelujah, I'm going to continue. And Solomon, uh, as a king, spoke of every area in which his government, his kingly office, uh, uh, would, would need to, to give oversight. Solomon was very detailed in his asking. He asked according to his assignment. I'm saying to you, ask according to your need and according to your assignment today. This is what he did. And so, he said, like, uh, hear this, uh, when somebody wrongs, and this is First Kings chapter 8 and verse 31 to 39, and Solomon is praying, and you're going to have to uh, keep on with this, uh, this, this great prayer for me as I continue to explain it to you. Solomon says when someone wrongs his neighbor, he's setting forth the requirements before God, and they come and they swear the oath before the altar in this temple, he says, then, Father, hear from heaven and act. Judge between your servants concerning the guilty by bringing them down on their heads what they have done and vindicating the innocent by treating them in accordance with their innocence. Now, how can he not know when God answers? When he laid out the specifics of the request so intelligently 
with such great wisdom. He gave God all that God needed to answer him by. Praise God. And so he went on <laughs> saying, verse 33, when your people Israel have been defeated by an enemy because they have sinned against you, he knew that Israel would sin. Solomon is bringing up by the wisdom of God every condition known to man in this prayer. And he's asking God. He didn't say, God, uh, uh, will this happen? No, he's saying, when this happen, will you forgive given these conditions? Will you take care of us given these conditions? Shall we? Shall we not ask God specifically? I have prayed at the right time. But I, when I'm finished, I'm going to just tell you another short prayer. But listen here. And when your people Israel have been defeated by an enemy because they have sinned against you, when they turn back and give praise to your name, say turn back and give praise, praying and making supplication to you in this temple, then the Lord hear from heaven. It is I, oh, I'm just trying to tell you how clear and intent and how teachable you have to be while you're listening to these episodes. Because you may be asking for a car, but you didn't ask for the wheel caps. <laughs> you're asking for the house, but you need to ask for the roof. I'm just saying to you, put it together the way you want it. I've never seen a car going down the road on three wheels. Well, you ask for all that you want. God will give you what you want. You may get something else. Amen. And so, praise be to God. Then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people, Israel, and bring them back to their land that you gave to their, their ancestors. Pray because he knows the script. Do you know the script? Do you know the word of God? So that you are able to bring the word of God line by line, precept upon precept, and then repent. Stay in repentance. Stay in forgiveness. The prerequisite for answered prayer is a clean hands and pure heart. There's no getting around it. Doesn't matter how fancy you are. Solomon is intent. He's praying while he's still in good standing. Somebody say, pray while you're in good standing. <laughs> and when the heavens are shut up, and there's no rain, and your people have sinned against you, and when they pray toward this place, the temple, and give praise to your name, and turn from their sin in which you have afflicted them, will you then hear from heaven? Oh, the man of God continues. I'm so astounded by the meticulous order of this prayer that if you miss one line or precept, you have four other things to back up. They are clauses, they are main ideas, then they are little clauses. And he continues not missing a mark. And I'm asking you, be intelligent in your prayer going forward. Let God know that you know something about him. Take Psalm 107 and declare, I know what you're like because you wrap yourself in light like a garment. Talk to God. Hallelujah. Now, Isaiah 43, tell him this. You told me, God, when I walk through the waters, I shall not drown. And when I walk through the fire, they shall not scorch me. Today I say, when the virus passes by, it shall not make contact with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be not conformed to the spirit of fear. Be not conformed to the spirit of fear. Be conformed to the spirit of prayer. Oh, praise be to God. I, I feel, do, do you know what? I feel like, somebody ought to tell you, I feel like preaching, but I will order myself. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so, Solomon is acknowledging the power of God. He's acknowledging the, the human condition. And so today, as we close this, so going forward, you will not forget. I'm going to teach you line by line 
how to bring a request to God. Because when he answers, you will know it because you made the request. And don't forget, the world is praying for you. And I am one of them. Amen. So then, to five, this great prayer, this model prayer, take this as a teaching model. I don't want you to miss it. Heavens are shut up. There's no rain. Today you can't go outside. The people have sinned against you. He's accounting these things unto sin. And he says when they pray toward this place and give praise to your name, praise being crucial, turn from their sin because you have afflicted them then, then, Father, somebody say, then. Then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel. But then, O oh Lord, then do not leave them. Teach them the right way to live and send rain on the land that you gave to your people for an inheritance. He's holding God to his covenant. And verse 37, as we end this session, here is what concerns you. When famine or plague comes to the land, or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, or when an enemy besieges them in any of their cities, whatever disaster or disease may come, Finally, and when a prayer or plea is made by anyone among your people, Israel, by anyone, that is a prayer of a righteous man. Being aware of the afflictions of their own hearts and spreading out their hands toward this temple, then, O oh sovereign Lord, hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and act. Deal with everyone according to all that they do. He's pleading for sovereign justice. Since you know the hearts, for you alone know the human heart. Solomon is not uh, asking for sanctions. He's asking for mercy. He's saying, I am standing in place as their sovereign king under you. And I'm saying, God, when these things happen, I want you to be moving in your own righteousness, you eternal judge of heaven. And when the conditions set forth in the prayer meet your approval, then answer from heaven. That is what he's saying. May today, O oh God, this is not to be taken lightly. Let the conditions of your prayer meet the requirements of God through the Holy Spirit, through the person of Christ Jesus today. And a saint to God. God, hallelujah, let your servant hear from you today. Uh, maybe you'll be walking through your house and hear a voice on your television. You were not watching it. Somebody knocks on the door. The Lord bless you. The Lord will answer you. Praise be to God. Set forth the conditions. Being mindful of who he is and who you are. Amen. The Lord bless you. are at the end of a, a prayer dialogue, a, um, a very powerful prayer pattern, a true model prayer. 
If I am going to teach prayer ever again and forever, I will not forget this prayer. Because what is required to please God is very, very visually imp impacting in this prayer. Exceedingly, if you are looking with the eyes of an anointed person, or some anointed person is teaching you this prayer it, it, the Holy Spirit leading by precept and concept line by line and Solomon covering every aspect of human difficulty not missing anything that could occur among Israel his people so among us today we have missed not chunks but uh, craters I mean like huge and, and some do not holler at God. Do not scream. Pay attention. God does not operate on five senses like you do. Amen. He will answer. Put forth the conditions. I will continue to do this. And you're going to get the, the ideas that, wait a minute, I wasn't praying like that. I didn't know that I had to uh, go that deep. Yes, because you could die for thirst beside an ocean of water because you don't know how to ask. There is a method, there's methodology in your theology. How do you like that? It is true. And so, whatever the virus is made of, you know, I know you would like me to say something about it. <laughs> well, yes. But I'm not going to jump in on the virus before I teach you how to discern what the virus is. Now, I'm praying that at the end of uh, the prayer I pray that at the right time that uh, you miss the virus altogether. You need a prayer routine. You need a personal prayer plan. Do you understand? Then you need to do it consistently and fill the air, bombard the atmosphere with prayer. Amen. Till it comes down like Jew. Shalom. And so, oh, well then, what I have seen, it, 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 it points to, in this prayer of Solomon, he brings up uh, repentance, acknowledgement of God's sovereignty and his desire to forgive us. He talks about prolonged and penetrating uh, uh, of pleading before God. I don't know how long he was before God and how many days and how many years and how many months, I, I don't know. But I'm telling you, he was before God a long time. Praise God. He's asking for a return to divine order. So today you want your body to conform not to fear but to divine order. You want your lungs and your cells to function as God made them. And so the Lord bless you today and increase you as you breathe deeply and freely the breath of God. Amen. Amen. Breathe freely. Breathe deeply. And I'm asking God. And I, 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 need to, I need to ask God to join me with some folk that will command the air to release its toxins and to shake down every contaminating agent out of the atmosphere that you may breathe the full breath of God. Hallelujah. That your body today returns to divine order. Here's the thing. Your lungs might be compromised or performing an illegal function causing you to get tested today for something because your lungs are performing an illegal function they're not supposed to do what they're doing your skin your vir your immune system is not supposed to be doing what it's doing it's operating contrary to the will of the creator who made it. 
Our job as healers is to petition God under the right circumstances to return your body to optimal function and in divine order. That's our job. When we do that, the lungs respond, the bowels respond, the cancer leaves. I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus Christ, this is so. Because we know what is. When Solomon prayed, he had an idea of what should be. He saw his father reigning. He had an idea what kingly life should be, what subject should be, what order should be. And he prayed according to what is right and true. The righteousness of God be over you today in Jesus' name and your lungs. Hallelujah. And so say this. The miracle working power of Christ Jesus at work in my lungs, my cells, and every bodily function, including all my organs, is doing a perfect and a complete work of healing and restoration here and now with perfect results. The Lord bless you as we continue in another episode. Praise be to God. Hear from you. Amen. You can reach Apostle Dr. Eureka Stewart via email at the breakthrough at BethesdaMiracle.com, on her website at BethanyCovenantAlive.net. Use to contact us on Facebook at Apostle.dr.e.stewart. Voice of the Nation's TV ministry is on every Sunday at 5 p.m. on the Go Live TV app, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Thereafter, it's on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website. You can also find it on YouTube and Vimeo. Search under Voice Over the Nations. Donate if you are in agreement with what the Apostle is doing. Help the Apostle to help you. Sow into her ministry and become a partner. Use the donate link on the Go Live TV app under Voice Over the Nations or use the donate link on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website. Prayer requests are available on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website. Put the Apostle to work for you. Share your prayer requests. She will pray for you and into your situations. Service. See the Apostle live in action, preaching the now word of God every Sabbath. That's Saturday from noon till 3 p.m. at 89 Thornmount Drive, Unit 11, Scarborough, Ontario, Canada, near the corner of Morningside and Shepherd. If you are in agreement with helping the Apostle to take her ministry to the nations, become a partner. Use the donate link on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website. Kingdom Prayer Watch. Pray with the Apostle. They are available on BethanyCovenantAlive.net or on YouTube. You can search under Kingdom Prayer Watch. Podcasts and intimate chat with Apostle Dr. Eureka Stewart are available via BethanyCovenantAlive.net or you can search Eureka Stewart on Apple, Google, Spotify, Breaker, or Anchor. The Apostle releases a Kingdom quote every day in English and Spanish. They are available on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website or on Twitter and Instagram. Twitter is dr. E-U-R-I-C-A. Instagram is dr.e.stewart. If you are in agreement with helping the Apostle bring a World Healing Day event, become a partner. Use the donate link on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website.